So I mix a bit of uh, cadmium red, a bit of cadmium orange and a bit of burnt sienna to get that uh, brick color going in the background. So it's not really red. So it's, it's a mix of all these colors and I try to put it as uh, pale as possible because it's in the backdrop f away from my main subject. Next, uh, I'll mix a bit of cobalt blue, a bit of royal blue, and a bit of burnt sienna to come up with a kind of a muted uh, bluish gray for the wall of the building. So I take this color further down, all the way up to the ground, and it becomes a bit warmer as we move towards the ground. It's uh, much cooler uh, as we get further away from us where the building in the background. Actually, there's a street where I'm putting the color right now. So I'm not going into much details there. So I'll just leave it a bit abstract and then fill in the rest of the area with the warm color. So I start applying the same warmth to the darker areas of the vehicle. Uh, it needs to be much cooler, so I'll start with a bit of warm color and then I'll glaze over a bit with a bit of dark cooler colors later. So the well lit areas would be left white. Actually that's one of the things that I wanted to demonstrate in this particular video. The, the benefit of leaving white paper behind. It's very easy to do. You don't need to do anything. You just leave the paper white and by painting around it, we can make that paper glow and uh, create the focal area of the painting. So it's time that I start mixing the darks by using the existing colors on the palette and by adding colors like burnt sienna and burnt umber and cobalt blue into the mix.
I should not go overboard with uh, creating these uh, stones on the wall so, because it's further away from my focal area and uh, and it's almost at the edge of the painting so it's not a good idea to like create so much of interest in the edge of the paintings the pipe that I'm currently putting in they also have the ability to take the eye away from the focal area but uh, because it's almost the same color it's actually a the darker version of the brick color that I mixed so it's all right and again a few marks to denote the bricks not nothing serious just a few pale marks A bit of a muted blue to differentiate the metal from the wall of the building behind. I, st I start mixing the colors for the shadow. We have kind of a huge shadow, so needs lots of paint. It needs to be darker than that. Uh, I add a lot of neutral tint into the mix to make it darker and that about looks good. So I'll make use of that color to put in the large shadow shape. The warmer parts of the vehicle are dry, so what I'll do next is uh, come up with kind of a muted bluish grey and make use of that to glaze over the warmer areas. So once I do that, the color almost looks like the shadow in the photo. 
and I make use of the same gray to put in the darker areas of the tarpaulin at the back of the vehicle. Now I make the shadow mix even darker by adding more burnt umber and neutral tint and also a bit of a cobalt blue. It needs to be darker than the wash that I came up with earlier. And the purpose of this uh, this dark patch that I'm putting in at the moment is to just make the focal area glow a bit more. So if you look at the reference photo, I think it's actually a door there. So it nicely fits in with my, uh, my attempt to make the focal area much more prominent. The only change that I did was to move the door a bit towards the right so that it creates a contrast with the edge of the vehicle on the right. A bit of neat work required here, uh, not something that I enjoy, but I need to make sure that I leave a white line there. So I try to be as careful as possible. looks good and it has made the focal area even brighter it's interesting because the focal area is supposed to be the the main part of the painting and we haven't actually painted it at all we have just left the white paper and the place that we have not painted at all is actually the most important part here. Now it's time to put in the, the darkest areas in the painting uh, with almost a black that I have mixed with the existing mix and adding a bit of blue and other bits into it.
adding these details is consuming a lot of uh, time. A lot of details in this painting because it's almost a portrait of a vehicle more than anything else. So all the details in the vehicle needs to be added in carefully. So it's consuming a lot of time. and some more details to be added. Actually, there's quite a few that I need to add in my focal area. And a bit of turquoise to, to put in the buckets at the back of the vehicle. So we've got like two buckets there. So this painting doesn't have much of a color. It's kind of a muted grayish kind of painting. So the two bits of uh, colors that I planned when I started the painting was these buckets, the turquoise ones at the back, and also the tail lights. So the tail lights are not lit, it's a parked vehicle, but still they will be red and orange and once I add them so they'll add a bit of bit more glow to the focal area. I almost missed the side mirror and it's very important. The moment that I added it's creating a bit of contrast with the wall at the back and bring the vehicle a bit forward towards us. Time to add the tail lights. A bit of red and a bit of orange would do the trick. Uh, the lights on the right are in the shade. I'm not mixing the colors differently, I'm just putting it on top of the existing shadow that I have painted. So that has worked well. And I make use of the orange to add a, some bits and pieces at the back of the vehicle. So I'll dry this painting completely and once dried I realized that uh, I haven't really captured the sunlight in the painting so I thought of just glazing it over with a bit of warmth. Uh, it's just a mix of yellow ochre and raw sienna and just glaze over all the darker areas in the vehicle, in the ground and also in the walls and pretty much all the areas that are in the shadow. So as you can see we kind of able to capture the sunshine by adding this glaze. So that's it for today. I'll remove the tape and as you can see it looks much better with a white background. So hope you enjoyed this demo. The purpose of this demo is to demonstrate how we can make use of the white paper uh, to create a nice focal area.
I have given a link to the finished painting and the reference photo in the description. Uh, please give it a go and see how it turns out. Thanks for watching and see you in another video. Thank you.